Hello. Um, Hello. Good morning, Mr. Conviti. Um, I'm honored uh, to be with uh, with you today, and uh, I would like to thank you first of all for uh, accepting uh, our invitation to talk about your, uh, let's say, your own career, as well as uh, your your Carmat adventure. Um, especially today that we, uh, um, I've heard in the news today that uh, your third uh, patient was uh, was announced to uh, to have returned home. So, which is uh, yes. probably a, a good news for you. So, uh, well, thank you very it's much. Not good news for the patient, but uh, yeah, really yeah, of course, of course. So, thank you very much, and uh, well, let's let let's maybe uh, start. Uh, if you could first tell me um, tell me a little bit more about yourself, um, what um, what you have done, what is your your personal uh, experience until now, before Karmat, mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. um, if you could tell us more about yourself. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, thank you for for uh, for this interview. It's my pleasure, my honor, to be here with you and eventually share this experience with the people that is going to be in touch, be exposed to <coughs> to your media. Well, my name is Marcello Conviti. I'm Italian, as might be my accent uh, is going to reveal, and I'm 63. And um, my background, I'm, um, I have a PhD in, uh, in uh, computer science, and, but I was basically involved since the very beginning of my professional life into, um, into uh, medical device industries. Uh, I was uh, originally with uh, Fiat in Italy, and unfortunately it was a very you know, tough time, and my boss has been killed by the Red Brigade, and Fiat uh, redeployed the people that was working with him within uh, different kind of uh, businesses. And at the time, Fiat was the major shareholder of a company called Sorin Biomedica that today is the number one on the cardiovascular field in Europe. And I started my career at the Sorin Biomedica in 1981. So this is my, my first part of my background. In 1992, when I turned 40, um, I think the decision was time to me to look into an international company. Being Italian, an Italian company, is, you know, I don't want to spend all my life in this. And so I went to a company that is quite well known in the in the biomedical field called Baxter Healthcare. That is uh -huh. maybe we about uh, the number one um, uh, in terms of the span of uh, of the turnover and market cap in the world. And I've taken the position of uh, Italian um, director for the cardiovascular businesses. And then uh, quickly I move into the position of vice president of Europe and marketing and sales. And I turn uh, president to Europe when um, uh, within uh, Baxter Healthcare, uh, the cardiovascular business has been spanned off with a company called uh, Edwards Life Sciences. I that agree. is uh, today one of the main main players into the cardiovascular business. Mm, I see. So then, uh, you know, to be 63 gives you the privilege to have a very long career. <laughs> In 2009, has been approached by Mr. Carpentier that was in touch with due to my Baxter and overall Ader's experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, he have asked me that he has this kind of adventure and he believed that it's time for me to give back uh, a bit of what I got from this field. It's a great opportunity to have uh, somebody that has a senior experience uh, to join. A company was ready to be launched and uh, it was quite um, uh, quite attractive to me, to possibility to somehow to to do something to make the difference. Mm. I was, you know, it was not easy because I've taken the decision to move out of a company that I have uh, around more than, <coughs> sorry, more than 1,000 employees at the time. And successful. <laughs> and very successful. And then, um, no, they remain successful even after me. So maybe my contribution was <laughs> good, was not vital. Uh, but um, but um, and then to join a company at the time like uh, like Arma was around 40 people, but it's true one thing is that one of the reflections has been uh, somehow underlined by Mr. Carpentier and some other uh, board member of of of, of, of Karma to say you know here yeah, you could make the difference. At the mm. time I was uh, 57, and uh, for another hand I was running uh, Europe for uh, for for Baxter 
And then AdWords, this is more or less in terms of people, business, same story. For something like 17 years, it was time to me just to, to move uh, somewhere else. And um, I didn't want to take any American position. I've been in the U.S. at the beginning of my career, but, uh, you know, 57 is not, at least it was I think, beyond my, 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 my wish and expectation. So, you know, I uh-huh. take the decision. I moved from, uh, from Lausanne, Switzerland, into here in, uh, in Paris, France. Uh-huh. And uh, since then, I have the pleasure and the great honor to run to run the climate operations. Oh. Yeah. So it was it was some kind of a exciting adventure that you, you actually start at the time, right? Yes, very much exciting because of for one end uh, is uh, the same the same uh, span of customers, the same um, the same. Uh, wish to provide a definitive solution for very hard, very difficult uh, illnesses, but uh, I could be able to bring with me my own previous experience in terms mm. of, uh, not only in terms of customers, somehow in terms of uh, indications, surgeries, uh, environment, but also in terms of background. Um, here there is basically the combination of three things, but the biomedical, the bio uh, immocompatibility, like in the heart valve business, that is has been and is the core of Edward's life sciences, is the key point. And I'll be able to bring it with me. It was very good. Mm, okay, that's interesting. And um, so, so that gave you the the sufficient experience to to actually uh, do what you do today in the Carmat organization. What is it exactly that you do for Karma today? Well, what is, let's say, your, your day to day? I do, yes, I do three basically things. But first of all, I try to run the program. Mm-hmm. That is quite complex because, of, uh, for one end, we have an external visibility customers, uh, oh, patients, uh, surgeons, uh, medical world. Mm-hmm. Mm, and, and the second one, I try to help, I try to lead the build-up of Karmat as a, as a real company. It was a kind of R&D company when it came on board with people that came over from uh, from aerospace industries and we tried, and I tried, and another try as part of my commitment and responsibility to create a kind of um, uh, standalone company with people that have a different kind of experience. By the way, we also have chosen uh, to be public traded in the, in the Paris Stock Exchange. Uh-huh. It was a kind of earthquake inside because at the time, they're even not uh, the rate of finance. I think that for four years, we have been uh, the company the, with the largest um, market cap on the alternate without uh, having a medic, uh, um, a finance, a finance director that joined the company maybe a few months ago. So that is my first commitment. The second commitment is basically um, to run uh, um, to run a relationship with the financial community. Uh, we are a company that we do not have any kind of, uh, of revenues so far, and uh, we have a kind of a high level of burn rate. We have around 100 people here that should be paid every month. And we have uh, um, and we have a lot of uh, external suppliers that should be paid as well. Uh-huh. So you know, my second major responsibility is might be more or less equal to the first one in terms of time spent. Yeah. is how to manage uh, how to manage a relationship with the people that uh, have invested into us or eventually want to invest into us with uh, the public authority that uh, gave us a big grant and they continue to s- support us. That is the second one. The third one is basically to manage communication overall with regulatory bodies and with uh, and with the external world. We have been quite uh, under scrutiny, under a very big uh, big light as far as the media is concerned. Yeah, well, about to say that and, it's probably not the yeah. easiest the easiest task for now. Uh, <laughs> in all fairness, uh, no. But even though, for one end. Um, we could not have um, we could not have uh, uh, everything without give anything. So I see that uh, we also take a lot of benefits about that in terms of visibility with the medical community, visibility with uh, investors. So we had to give back something. Of course, uh, that different angle and um, and uh, the heart per se in a kind of a global heart substitution like this one is quite evocative. It could be iconic of a different kind of thing, so I think that we have to try to manage it in a proper mm, way. Of course. On 
top of it, uh, we are, you know, we have the pleasure to run with a big personality um, uh, that they have their own way to manage also the communication. So try to coordinate it and be in a public company is not an easy matter because of, of course, we have also to, to be quite sensitive with uh, our shareholder rights and also with, with the law. So it's, it's a kind of mix. I was uh, prepared about that because of uh, both uh, uh, Banster Healthcare and Edwards has been public uh, traded company, so I was as a part of my job to avoid uh, any issues with uh, the competent authorities and with the shareholders. But some of the other players here, either clinicals and non clinicals, have been less familiar than me, so sometimes I have to do a kind of um, you know, uh, try to reduce <laughs> effect of uh, of uh, some issue that's happened, but but it uh, it's, it's it's part of it is part mm. of the job. Okay. So, so those are the three well major uh, daily commitments. There are mm. a lot of different things, but those three are the first three. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. I understand. Uh, now, if um, l- let us say, let's get to to the heart of the activity. The the Mm-hmm. Well, basically the karmic heart. Uh, yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, <clears throat> what makes it maybe so unique? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, some some of the. Uh, let's get inside of it. You know. Mm-hmm. But, um, but let's start about uh, about what is unique in our prosthesis. Um, but first of all, our prosthesis is a total artificial heart. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, an heart transplant. Just to have you and for you, uh, the people that might be going to be exposed to this interview, a bit of, uh, of, uh, of um, education. Uh, there are, we are doing exactly what the surgeon are doing with the transplant. Usually a heart, sick heart is sick on the pulsatile, usually means in 99% of the case. Mm-hmm. It's sick on the pulsatile part of the contractility of the heart that has been given by the ventricle. As you probably remember from your basic uh, study, uh, there are two ventricles and the two atrium. The atrium, they do not contract, where the ventricle contract. And on the contraction, the left ventricle is going to get the blood into, the, the clinician say, in the systemic way. So everywhere but the lungs, where the right uh, ventricle push the heart into the lungs that uh, in only in any mammals, including human being, they are very close to the heart. So you have a different kind of pressure profile, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. So the, the, our total artificial heart is going to replace, so the recipient's heart is going to be split into two, the, into two major sections. So the, 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 the atrium has been kept in place. Keep in mind that in the atrium there is a lot of vessels where into the ventricle there are basically the aorta oh, and the pulmonary and the pulmonary the pulmonary. Um, so uh, um, uh, we do what the surgeon are doing with our transplant. Then there is another uh, area of illnesses in which only the left ventricle is sick. In this case, uh, there are um, some other possibilities that uh, the, the heart has been left in its own place and somehow the left ventricle has been helped to provide more cardiac output. And this is the area in which there are lots of mini pumps, like uh, some you know, major company like uh, HeartMate, like, uh, like, uh, like Toratec, and mm-hmm. they are basically devoted into the left ventricle axis devices. Mm-hmm. There are two different uh, ways to approach it. In that, those cases, the heart has been left in place Wholly, entirely, without any kind of any kind of touch. Now, having signed that, that is the background. Uh, what are the three major characteristics of our approach? One is um, that all the blood has been all in touch with biomaterial. So, eventually, and we get back to you to this one later on. Eventually, um, we don't need. We need a much smaller uh, anticoagulation treatment uh, than any other device. That is the characteristic number one. Uh, the characteristic number two is uh, it is unique. Uh, any anything anything like that yeah, in the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second one that is also unique is the fact that uh, we are, um, 
we are providing cardiac output according to the patient needs. You, uh, you could easily feel yourself and if you try to climb stairs quickly, your heart goes up because your body needs more, more right. energy, so it needs more blood, okay? Mm -hmm. Or when you're going to sleep, your blood, uh, you, you, you have rate goes down just for the opposite. Your blood is horizontal. Uh, your, your body is horizontal, so you don't need to have uh, um, energy. Uh, this kind, the same level of activity. So our machine works pro absolutely in the same way, not only in the physiological stairs, sleep, but also in pathological situations. So I don't know, if you have a bleeding, uh, your heart rate moves up because of the blood is going to bring to the place where you bleed or uh, the patient bleeds. Um, more platelets, so we need more out to just to deposit those kind of things. So our machine do exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And this is absolutely unique. So the third point is, uh, is the fact that, that we are also, um, all the cavity and has been done in order to guarantee that um, all the blood that is inside get out of at any kind of beat rates or around like in the physiological situation around 80%. So we are doing exactly the same, and we will be able to guarantee it due to two things. The sensor that are inside, that is the guarantee. And the reason why is basically because of have two different engines that provide enough energy to do uh, the physiological uh, contraction of the cavity, the two ventricles, in the same way that, uh, that uh, the, the human heart is doing. So those are the three major characteristics. All of it uh, have also some constraint. It should be the same cage or very similar cage to a normal heart because of, uh, you know, uh, the nature provide uh, the bodies of the human with a cavity that is more or less the same yeah. independently of uh, your sex, your, or your gender, and, uh, and uh, where you're born. Uh, so it means that uh, we have some limitation. We cannot make it uh, big so big that could not stay inside the chest. Mm -hmm. And this is something that has been one of the main constraints since the very beginning of our, of our heart. And the second thing is that the machine should work properly uh, at least for five Price years. Having in, mind, having in mind that uh, one patient that is going to be transplanted today have around a, four, a little bit more than 50% of being still alive in 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. So five years of life expectancy is going to be considered a very good challenge uh, yeah. for the surgeons. Okay, well that's interesting, and and basically, I mean, as of today, the, the you have already implanted three patients. The third one just just got got back home, if I understand today. Um, do you have any any future? Um, you know, what what are the next steps for you? Is it and the next steps are basically we have a, we are involved in our science things that has been called a feasibility study. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we have to test the feasibility of our machine. And in order to do that, the protocol calls for four patients, 30 days each. So at the moment, we have uh, three patients uh, with uh, all together for over 450 days. Unfortunately, the first two patients, for different reasons, mm -hmm. but, fortunate, but the reasons related to the machine, they, they have an accident and they pass it away. So we have to manage the two things, and this is what we are working on. The next step is going to have a, another patient implanted, and for this one, I cannot give any kind of more information of because it is quite uh, strictly low in France for the clinical study. But once this one is done, we are going to move into a pivotal study in which we are going to have less sick patient mm -hmm. and with an expectation of longer uh, a time of observation, usually six months, mm -hmm. and with this one we are going to apply for the CMAC and then start uh, uh, step by step the commercialization of our machine. Okay. Those are the next step. Yeah, and the horizon the next, for that? Uh, yeah, I see that uh, honestly our business horizon uh, is uh, to be in the market uh, in 2017. Mm -hmm. And of course we are working day and night uh, to do as soon as we could in the better possible way. Because one part of our job, uh, um, Julian, is the fact that uh, 
we have uh, a lot of patients, a lot of physicians, a lot of families that are writing to us to eventually to be exposed mm-hmm. to our machine because of, unfortunately, say more than nine out of ten, the people that have this degree of our failure, they don't have any expectation, including the transplant because of uh, in Europe uh, in the U.S., uh, transplant cover less than 5% of the needs. Mm-hmm. Is a lot of, uh, obviously, a lot there, of there is there is a, a, a large need. That's 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 for sure. Okay. Well, that's yeah. Tomorrow. On top of it, it's also it's also it's also emotionally quite uh, tough because mm-hmm. those uh, those uh, emails, those calls arrive in my office, and well, it's not mm. easy to explain to that's a mother. Not everybody is eligible. Those, uh, yeah, and say, uh, you know, madam, I fully understand your point, but it's not my responsibility. I can't do anything more than that. Mm. But per se, it's extremely painful. Oh, yeah. For well, of course, for them it's much more painful than for me. But also for me and for the other people I care about, they're working on it. It's quite, uh, it's quite, quite painful. Hmm. Okay. W- would you say that uh, you know, like looking back at at you know what you've done just, uh, until now, and and obviously being innovative in in the healthcare mm-hmm. industry is is never easy. But uh, w- is that the biggest hurdle? What what, what were the 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 biggest difficulties that you face? Um, you, I tell you, innovation is... Uh, you could see that it's a different way to approach innovation. So in my previous experiences, means um, uh, 30 years of over 30 years in the medical device industries, I have seen two major... I was involved in two major innovations. One was the introduction of a membrane oxygenator in the carbon cardiopulmonary bypass, uh-huh. and the second one is a kind of large acceptancy of a biological valves into, into the, into the uh, valve uh, changement uh, surgery. And uh, those are uh, quite significant. It was, uh, if you look into um, the history of those two, very large field, huh? because when you're talking about oxygenation, well, everybody that undergo to heart operation needs to have an operation to have an oxygenator. There was a kind of the level of continuity is it was more technological. The 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 basic uh, remained the same. Where on the valves, thanks to Mr. Carpentier, it was a big turnaround. When I entered into this business, uh, um, there was 89 around 80 to 90 percent of the Patient has been treated with mechanical valves. Carpentier started with the biological valves, and mm-hmm. now some over 70% of the people have been treated with biological valves. Yeah. So you could see I've seen a big swing. Okay. Um, now uh, it was big. There are a lot of common points, but here is everything is different. There are nothing that could be compared with the current products into the market. So here is a really a big breakthrough. But there are two major uh, points. One is the finance. You know, we need a lot of money in doing that. Oh, yeah. And it's difficult for a company that is a kind of a status, a startup, to be able to have enough money to run such a challenging pro- uh, projects. And the second one is that there is so many different technologies when you put them all together that, uh, wow, to combine it all and to avoid that it's going to be intersection or negative intersection when each other is going to be quite difficult. So you need, for one end, a lot of visibility, a lot of, uh, you have to spend a lot of time on the money raise uh, part, but in the other hand, you should be extremely careful when you're going to select solutions and maybe to impl- implement uh, uh, somehow uh, solution improvement in order to to across uh, a kind of a virtual line in which maybe you improve, I don't know, the mechanical side, but then you fragilize the, the electronic side or the biological side, those kind of things. It's a kind of equilibrium, it's quite a big story. And to maintain, uh, to somehow to conjunct, equilibrium means basically time and reflection with the needs to have an event that could help you to have the money that is needed to carry on the product, the project, that, that is that that is a big ch- daily challenge. Mm, I see, and 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 obviously, I mean, you you mentioned it. You've been under the spotlight for you know with with the, the previous patient and everything. Is that a, and and obviously, it's one of your tasks, as, you know, in in communication. How did you manage that? Because it's well for a 
small company. We we could say mm-hmm. that a startup. Uh, it, it's 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 not always easy, and you know it's, it's quite uh, it's quite difficult. But uh, but in in in, in two way, I guess uh, um, we were proactive and reactive. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the reactive side, it has been extremely helped by the visibility and the familiarity of Mr. Carpentier and his teams to be mm-hmm. under the spot. They have been under the spot for many other innovations before, mm-hmm. so they know how to treat it. The second one, we have chosen only one country, France, for, to have the feasibility study, so it's going to somehow to give a kind of a perimeter to our expositions that is going somehow to help us a bit on this one. And the third one is that uh, the medical community overall was very much supportive. So that is more okay. So reactive. you don't feel, you don't feel alone. <laughs> no, we don't feel alone. On top of it, a lot of people knows uh, very well how difficult it is to carry on <clears throat> those kind of uh, heavy level of of innovation. So those people is going somehow, even though they are not in touch with us, they know and they they made a very a very a very good point. Honestly. I yeah. do believe that the best um, intervention in terms of media uh, presence has been of the people that we are never in touch with. And they yeah. basically pick it up very well. But proactively, we have done uh, lots of, uh, a lot of internal meetings with our people when they're going to be exposed. They're going to underline the same, the same message. And also our shareholders have been extremely, extremely careful about that. Uh, so I think that is also, you know, they have a common, they share so far the common interest that he uh, is now to explore and to make uh, a successful story. So they, they have in mind support the adventure rather than uh, cash out what they have. That mm-hmm. is also an help. Yeah, because usually when you are your stage as a company, uh, well, you have less exposure and you're, let's say, left alone to work, whereas, well, you, you obviously have to deal not only with your technical and, and development, but also with, you know, what people think of it. And yeah, the it's kind of touchy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and honestly, that is, uh, that is the good and the bad side of the heart. I see that everybody knows a lot about the heart. When you're going to talk about, uh, I don't know, uh, um, uh, cells, uh, those kind of things. Well, it's extremely specialistic mm-hmm. in terms of the way in which things act and the way in which things are. Uh, with the heart, everybody understands the heart is uh, something that is inside each one of us. Everybody have uh, around him in the family or uh, somehow nearby somebody that suffers of heart problems. So it's something that everybody have his own uh, pre-built opinion and we have somehow to compare it, and this is going to make it uh, quite uh, interesting for the media, uh, the media industries to expose uh, more. I think that out of our first uh, implant, we have uh, over a thousand uh, media spots around the world, from China to I don't know Kazakhstan uh-huh. to you know uh, the media. Uh, somehow underline the point from what's the journal to one page of the what's the journal on the New York Times, New York Times with the local media in uh, Kazakhstan or in Arkansas. It's it's uh, because everybody's so interested, you know. Mm, yeah. If you keep in mind that 95 percent of the people in the over 100,000 of them every year is going to pass away, eh? mm. so it's not you. <laughs> um, and it's going to be more and more due to the due to the to the aging of the populations, blah blah blah. Uh-huh. Uh, well, uh, people say, oh Jesus, you know, there's something that maybe could be useful for me or for somebody in my family as well. At some moment. point in time, yeah. Yeah, uh, that is something that uh, somehow stressed uh, a bit uh, your the the, the 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 kind of people interested about it. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, we're getting to the end um, of, of our little discussion, and, and it's obviously very interesting. Um, maybe last thing I could be asking you is, um, you know, what what to you would be the most important to remember about this this whole experience with this project? Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, if you have any advice for, we are lucky to... Uh, to accompany some some startup uh, at some point mm-hmm. in their life, uh, mm-hmm. sometimes. Mm-hmm. So you know, if you have any advice, I think that uh, basically um, three things: be extremely careful on 
on uh, people selection and people evolutions. Mm -hmm. uh, in the startups, uh, people play an individual extremely important role, not only because of uh, uh, usually in the startup there are not many people, but also because of uh, being innovative means that you should find out some people that have an idea about that. So be extremely careful how you select them, how you to move them into into the internal career. That is might be people that have been a great searches, might be not be really good, even not interested to become, I don't know, the, the director of manufacturing. So it's not the same criteria that you have in the normal industries to move people inside the organization. Be extremely careful and try to maintain competence and enthusiasm and to have the competent and enthusiasm inside it. The second point is that be selective. Try to put what is most important mid-term. I don't want to say long-term. Maybe if they are not the short term, you never be long. Mm -hmm. But um, you could not only do that in daily basis. You should have a kind of, uh, it could be six months, it could be three months, it could be one year, but you should have um, a kind of a very strong guideline for your next steps uh, uh, within, a, within a very, very short term. And the third one is maybe try to maintain a good equilibrium. You're going to be exposed to a number of different things. Try to balance uh, your day uh, properly and to maintain focus on what is, uh, what is the aim, uh, the final aim of your company instead of to be somehow exposed to a kind of daily swing that could raise up. So those three things, be <clears throat> motivational, be selective, and be, be equilibrated are the three major points that I do recommend to people that is going to, to be exposed to, to those kind of situations. All right. Well, very, very good. So, well, got, uh, got to the end of it. So, uh, well, I need to, first of all, thank you for, you know, all those um, my valuable insights, the, the advice, obviously, maybe not for us directly, but for, for some of our um, 